In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, you are welcome to this moment of brief reflection on the Word of God for this 16th Sunday, ye air with Father Beatty. Today, Jesus confronts us with the reality of evil in our world as we journey to the kingdom of God. In the parable of the wheat and the wheat, Jesus explains to us this very fact. Now, we must never forget that so long as our nature remains tainted with sin and that we live in this time-space reality, evil remains part and parcel of our world. And therefore, we must never be surprised at the presence of evil everywhere in the world. Not because the evil has all the powers, no, but it's based on our fallen nature. To look for a perfect family, a perfect church, a perfect society would be an utopia if we, because we can never have a church or a society that is perfect. Sometimes we Christians are discouraged by the many mistakes and the imperfections present in our world. And it is worse that these same imperfections are found in the church. That ought not to be the case because the church also has its human face. And so mistakes do happen and evil may be present. It would be an illusion to embark on a journey in search for a perfect church. While the church may be a training ground for saints, we must never forget it also can be the refuge of sinners. It is a home for all, for the disturbed, the inadequate, the sad, the sinner. There is never a perfect human society, so the good, the bad, and the ugly must all live together. Just like Jesus explained to us in the parable, the wheat and the wheat must be left together to grow until the harvest. Now, the implications here is that we would always live with evil in our world. This may be a dangerous combination, and so the question will ask, what do we do with this reality of evil? How do we face it? Three points come to mind. Number one, from the parable of Jesus, we need to be patient. Patience, when the servant was asked, when the servant asked the master, should we go and pull out the wheat? The master said, no, leave them to grow until the harvest because pulling out the wheat might also pull out the grain. So allow them both to grow. This is a call for us to be patient with evil. Even if there is evil in the world, we need to be patient until the harvest. But being patient with evil, however, does not imply that we become complacent with it and let ourselves be overcome by evil. No. By no means, because how can we, who are destined to be heirs of the kingdom of God, end up being, I mean, succumbing to evil? No, that cannot be our portion. So evil must be resisted. It must be abhorred and we must defeat it. And this is clear from the parable already that the wheat is not overcome by the weeds. The wheat, which is the center of the farm, we see that despite the obstruction that the, and the destruction that the weeds inflict on the wheat, they are able to survive until the harvest time and with a bountiful result. So also, we who are called Christians must be ready to fight to the finish. We must struggle. We must be victorious over evil. This is our call. And we must leave no stone unturned in that direction. The second point is that we must be courageous and trust God for his support in this battle. Let us not be afraid, my dear friends. On our own, we cannot be victorious because it is not by our own strength. Though we are weak, we must not give up because God's power acts most when we are weak. So, we must therefore Pray, pray, and pray. We must not give up because sometimes we feel inexperienced or the experience of prayer has been difficult. No, we must never say it's difficult because God is with us. Besides, today we are encouraged and assured of the support of the Holy Spirit who comes to help us in our weaknesses. That's what 
Romans 8.26 says to us in our second reading, the Holy Spirit helps us, so we must succeed. Number three, we must live with hope. The Lord of the harvest will come and deliver us because good must always triumph over evil. And so, my dear friends, as we live with these things, two basic things we must also avoid. Number one, we must avoid being indifferent to evil. Evil is real, and being patient with its presence ought not to make us to become passive or indifferent to it. Let us not deceive ourselves into thinking that being on the fence about our opinion to evil can deliver us from its clutches. No. One of the attitudes that have destroyed our world today is the indifference to the lords of evils that is destroying the world. As Christians, we are called to be active, not passive, so we cannot be indifferent. The world is full of evil, not because there are many devils or there are many bad people in our world. No, it is because the few good people have refused to act. Therefore, we must not be indifferent to evil. The call to Christianity must be an active call to fight it. When, for example, we are indifferent to injustice, meted or shown to our neighbor, then we ourselves are unjust. St. Bernard Shaw once said, The worst treatment we can give to our fellow men is not hatred, not to hate them. Mm -mm. The indifference we show to their plight is the worst thing we can do to humanity. So we must ask ourselves today, how often do I turn my face away from evil? How often do I pretend I have not seen it? Such indifference is in fact the same as the evil that is being done. Therefore, we should not be passive, my friends. We should not passively accept evil and remain indifferent to it. If we do, then we are as much involved in it as those who actively perpetrate it. We must desist such actions and confront evil when we face it. Number two, we must never run away from evil. The worst thing we can do to evil is to run away from it. Running away from evil does not stop evil. In fact, on the contrary, it permits evil to thrive all the more. And so, my dear friends, the Lord is calling us today to face evil and defeat it, rather than being passive to it or in the face of evil, run away from it. Perhaps in your life, you may be facing a lot of difficulties that we are trying to give up on life. The Lord is assuring us today that evil will never take the last word. And that is why at harvest, evil must be burned, evil must be destroyed, and the good must be allowed its rightful place. But this can be dangerous to the sinner anyway, because it is clear that the mercy of God from this parable has an expiry date, if you like. The day of harvest is the expiry date. Because evil may be allowed to thrive, at harvest it will be destroyed. You may be progressing in life as a sinner. Never think that your ways have been approved by God. Because a day is coming when your evil ways will be destroyed. And you risk losing your soul. And that's what Christ is telling to us. So now is the time to make amends. And that is why our first reading explains to us that our God is a merciful God. He forgives us our sins as we hear in the Psalms this morning. Let us profit from this window and make amends before the day of the harvest. Let us not be deceived that we walk in sin, we live in sin. And maybe, just maybe some of us are expecting that. The Holy Spirit will come down and maybe strike you dead because... As a sinner, you come to the altar of the Lord, or maybe you read at the, or you read the word of God. No Holy Spirit will do such a thing. It is a dangerous period. The period, the danger of the period lies in the fact that if we do not correct our ways, the harvest time will be the deciding time, the day of judgment, when we may be destroyed alongside our sins. 
So my dear brothers and sisters, let us reflect and think about our lives. Am I the weed or the wheat? Is my, are my ways evil or they are good? I know we are not perfect. However, God is giving us a chance. And that is why we must grab this chance today and reflect deeply and see ways through which we can make amends. Because our God is a God of second chance. He is a God of new beginnings. As we celebrate this day, my dear brothers and sisters, let us remember that we are destined to the kingdom of God and our call is that goodness must triumph over evil. So let us never give breathing space to evil. Let us confront it. Let us denounce it. And never be indifferent to the plight of our brothers and sisters. And we will truly be sons and daughters of God who are destined to his kingdom. And may the Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do have a wonderful Sunday celebration and a blessed week ahead. Jesus loves you.